I'm Bob Grove and we're talking about active transportation. So let's talk more about um, activism and that social equity. Um, Alex, you were talking about the role of government and how important the social equity aspects of active transportation are. Can you continue on that subject? Sure, and I know anybody in, you know, in this conversation could can carry that conversation going forward too. You know, um, you know, I was talking a little bit about sidewalks, a little bit of bicycles, but you know, I think it's also important that, you know, something that we call in our in our line of work something called the first mile, last mile dilemma, which is is pretty much exactly what it it sounds like. You know, we we try to people need to get to destinations throughout the day, whether that be to a doctor's appointment, whether that be to work, to recreate to do anything, to go back home and go home from those places. And so they need to be able to get to those destinations. And it's, it's, it's important for, you know, local jurisdictions, counties, the state, the feds to, to be thinking in terms of how, how they best conserve those populations. Um, and so, it, you know, it, that could be through uh, sidewalk, you know, sidewalks could be through trails. Uh, which have a benefit also of, you know, preserving in some cases, you know, nature and, and you know, those watersheds. It could be uh, public transportation access. So, you know, people need to get from their homes to these destinations. How do they get there? And so if you got to get to a, you know, uh, your bus stop, you know, if you have to walk in an unlit sidewalk free roadway, that speed limit is 45 miles an hour. That's incredibly dangerous. Uh, and, 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 you know, but people, they do it all the time. Uh, it's something that, you know, if they have to get to work, then they have to get to work. And so, you know, if, whether that be at nighttime or, or during the day, uh, you know, these are considerations. So, you know, some of the work that Bike Walk KC does, uh, I work very closely with them, is, is working with municipalities on uh, complete streets projects. And, and ordinances. So, you know, this is an effort to, to start considering the street as kind of a whole. You know, Sarah talked an awful lot about, you know, you know the different kinds of streets there are. So there's busy, busy intersections, there's, there's local roads, um, but, you know, talking about sidewalks, uh, ADA accessible ramps, Americans with Disability Act, you know, ramps that are accessible for, for, for people with disabilities, um, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, all those different things, the speed limit, street trees, lighting, I mean, all these things that sound kind of really obvious when you think about it and stop, but you know, sometimes, you know, when, you, when you're driving down a street, you may not recognize those different elements existing uh, rather than walking it yourself. And so that's, uh, you know, we, we, we work, you know, Mike Walk KC especially, but I've, I've worked with, with uh, them on, on working with communities to, to kind of rethink how they, build roads, how they build their communities uh, through something called complete streets, which is thinking about the completeness of that street and thinking about, you know, equity for all users of that roadway. So that, I mean, I, I could go on and on on that, so I'll stop yeah. there. But it's, uh, I was just saying, it's really fascinating when you get into how different people make different choices about how they're going to travel. I, a good example, I think, is bike lanes. If you build a protected bike lane, women are more likely to bike in it than if you have a bike lane that's just striped on the street where you're closer to traffic. So if you only build the bike lane that's stripes on a street, you're building a facility that's going to be used mostly by men. Um, but if you build a, a facility that's more protected and more divided from traffic, you're building a facility that will be used by men and women. Um, and that's something that's been shown through research about the, the kinds of people who use those in different cities around the country. So I think it's fascinating that if we, if we think about our streets as only one thing, we're not building them for use by everybody. So we have to think about complete streets, not just about how we build the street, but how it's used by everybody in the community. That's very cool. Um, North Kansas City, how does it address the social equity issues when, when you're looking at your bike plan and such? Um, well, that's really part of our, our that's approach, part of it. Uh -huh. is build a street that's, that's safe and comfortable for users of all ages 
and all abilities. And then it can be used by all of the people in our community. Um, and so when you, when you look at our plan, we don't really talk about social equity um, using those words. What we're talking about is safe and comfortable for all ages and all abilities. And Liz, I know, I know Black Walk KC focuses a lot on activism and, you know, within this panel here, you're kind of unique in that position of being able to, you know, move across regions, across municipalities and, and focus on activism. How does the social equity role play for your group? We do uh, focus a lot on um, advocacy for equity and for transportation of all different kinds. Uh, one of the most recent projects that we've been working on has been a decriminalization of walking and biking in Kansas City, Missouri. So this is this was an issue um, after uh, the murder of George Floyd last summer, um, and after the protests and that sort of thing. Um, Mayor Quentin Lucas called for an evaluation of the city's municipal code to find. Uh, statutes or laws that may intentionally or not um, cause unsafe or unfair conditions for people of color or vulnerable road users. Um, we identified three different statutes and one of them was jaywalking. Uh, one of them was uh, bicycle inspections. Um, so uh, police used to be able to inspect someone's bicycle if it seemed to be in disrepair. Um, and another one was dirty wheels, which was probably intended um, to keep uh, like construction debris off the streets, but the way it was written was very broad. And so somebody who had just ridden through a mud puddle or who had just driven their car on an, uh, an, on an icy road um, and had dirty, dirty wheels um, could be approached you know, by a police officer for that. So uh, we worked with lots of partners on this and that's how we like to do, um, do our work is we worked with folks like the Midwest Innocence Project and Casey Housing, uh, Casey Tenants. Um, but we also worked with groups like Environment Missouri and the local Thomas Hart Benton Sierra Club because this is a diverse group of people who understand that walking and bicycling are important parts of how people get around. And if populations such as uh, people of color, um, are at greater risk um, for uh, violence or for, um, you know, tickets uh, because of these rules, then we need to question, uh, question the statutes that are in existence. So we're very, um, we're very happy to announce that the ordinance 210100 um, decriminalized all three of those uh, statutes last week. Uh, that was a great win um, for all of our partners and for Kansas City, Missouri in general. Uh, having safer streets um, means have a, being safer from uh, speeding cars and dangerous traffic, but it also means safer streets that are more welcoming to every kind of person who wants to use them. That's really great work. Um, Natalie, I understand there's what, 49,000 households in Kansas City that don't have access to a car. Um, for them, active transportation may be their only choice to get to work or get to school or, you know, oftentimes we're talking about food deserts in, in those parts of town. So even going someplace to get something to eat, it seems like uh, providing access for active transportation or other options is really important. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Rideshare KC is really typically focused on the commute um, as a specific type of trip. How can we make sure that people are able to get to work? And that is fundamentally a question of equity. Uh, it's a question of jobs access where we want to make sure that folks have affordable and flexible and reliable and accessible forms of transportation at their disposal. And this allows a whole host of opportunities to open up uh, for jobs or education, or like you said, access to healthcare and food. Um, one way that I think cycling is really integral is the way that it connects with the transit system. Um, so it allows folks to better utilize the transit system and have access to transit lines they might not normally be able to reach. 
um, and to use biking to, for instance, make connections and make their transit commute shorter. Um, when we think about uh, transit and transportation at Rideshare, we're always trying to think about um, how folks can just stay connected with their jobs and with those opportunities. You're on mute, Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. We'll have to cut that one out of there. Um, so as individuals, how do we engage in active transportation? You know, um, talking about planning, and Sarah, maybe you're a good one to talk about this, you know, when, when we're doing planning and such for agencies and municipalities, are, are there ways for your citizens to come and participate in that? Well, I think that I can never emphasize enough how important it is for residents to tell their local governments what is important to them, um, whether that's participating in public meetings or surveys or contacting your um, local elected representatives. It's important for the people who represent you and the people who work for you to know what you want as a community member. Um, so that's always very important. Um, and, you know, I, I actually live in KCMO, so it's been fun to uh, then turn that around as a community resident and say, well, this is what I want in my neighborhood, but it's really important for us to hear. And it's important for us to hear, um, you know, what we can then tweak to, to make better. Um, and, you know, it's an ongoing process. Um, I think that's the other important Thing for people to keep in mind is that when we when we make street improvements to make it safer more comfortable for people to walk and bike you know they're not set in stone um, we can still tweak and make them better so it's always important to provide that feedback um, but i also think it's important to keep in mind um, that it's a it's a, a two-way street of communication we need to hear from the people who are using these facilities um, and what they think is important as we're investing um, our, our infrastructure dollars in new projects. Well, thank you. And thank you to all of our guests for joining us tonight. Where can our listeners learn more about um, Rideshare KC, Natalie? So you can find us at ridesharekc.org and we are also in the app store on your phone. Uh, just search Rideshare KC and you'll be able to find Commute Buddies uh, and access a guaranteed ride home. Well, thank you. Alex, where can, um, where can our listeners go to learn more about Mark and specifically you know, your active transportation work? Yeah, so uh, it's marc.org, mark.org. We have uh, a number of plans that we've worked on regionally. We also have, although our offices are closed at the moment, we have produced uh, bicycle maps for the region. And so people can go online and order one of those, or they can go to different places. We've given them to many different places, such as the library system. Uh, North Kansas City just got a box a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, I've been trying to distribute those as best as I can. Uh, and they show on street and off street, that is to say trails as well. So mark.org, uh, and they can find everything they need there, I think. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Liz, where do we go to learn about Bike Walk KC? Well, I would like to compliment uh, Alex and Natalie first. That bike map, I can confirm, is an excellent bikeways map. And if you're looking to find the most up-to-date printed information about where the bikeways are, Mark has it. You can find uh, more information about Bike Walk KC at our website. It's bikewalkkc.org. It's all one word. And that's how we're also on social media, Bike Walk KC. Thank you. And Sarah, where can we go to North Kansas City and learn more about your, your bike plan and all of that? If you would like to learn more about our bike plan, it is on our website, so um, www.nkc.org slash bike. Um, you can find our plan there um, and lots of information about the projects that we're working on as we implement that plan. Well, thank you. And thank you to our listeners. This is Eco Radio. I'm your host, Bob Grove.